Good morning, Revolution, and welcome to uh, Good Morning Revolution. <laughs> <laughs> we gotta get the, uh, the, you know, the logo done. Hello, everybody. Scott and uh, Anita and Rosanna, Michael. Good morning, Good morning, Revolution. Good morning, Revolution. Good. Good. I can't yeah, yeah. hear you. I want to see <laughs> smiles. I Keep want to see excitement. I want to see. Scott jumping up and down because his homeboy is. His homeboy. Yeah, finally we can we can sit back and relax because <laughs> because the guy from Delaware is in the White House. Oh my! Did y'all did y'all watch the uh, inauguration? Did everybody watch it? Yes, I was glued to it. Glued to it, huh? I wouldn't go that far, but I uh, from the time that. I watched uh, from the time Trump and and his wife left the. White House. I just, it was a, a joy to see live. Good riddance. Yes. Get on that plane and just go. Goodbye. The end of the earth and be beyond it, right? <laughs> later for you. Later, <laughs> later. But, uh, you know, I watched a little bit of it and then I, uh, I'm working on my report. The keynote National Committee of our mm -hmm. Revolutionary Party is meeting. And, and that will be live streamed on Saturday, right, Joe? I don't know if I would go that far. <laughs> we'll, see. we'll see. I gotta finish it first. I don't want to get up there and embarrass, you know. <laughs> it's a collective report though. You know, I, I, I wrote it, some ideas out, I presented it. To all of those who you don't know, the Communist Party works on a collective basis, you know. So we prepare ideas and then we have a back and forth and then we throw all the ideas out and we start over again to reflect, <laughs> you know. Uh, so that's what I did anyway, at least this time. So it's the second or third uh, draft. Uh, we meet tomorrow at two. Uh, we're going to assess the political moment because we're at a turning point, I think. Rosanna, what do you think? I mean, uh, new executive uh, uh, directors from the president, how do you like them? Well, I think, yes, definitely, we are at a turning point. You know, I think we're also in the process of detoxing from all the hatred and all the lies and everything like that. And to be able to now shift to fighting for real issues, <clears throat> the struggle continues, but now we have a, a much better playing field to, to ensure that we have the what we need to beat this pandemic and get everybody else back to work and get the... Um, Healthcare, and you know, I mean, it's great to know that we're back in the in the game with the Paris uh, agreement, you know, the Paris agreements, and all of those kinds of things. It's it's very refreshing. So yes, I think we we need to take the moment to to see that our country really stood up. People have uh, the knowledge or the 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 conscious enough to fight back on what happened at the Capitol and and make this happen. And so. We definitely have to take that moment to celebrate, but then we got to continue the struggle because it's not, it's not going to be automatic. Yes, and and Anita, your take on the executive orders of the president and what they mean for the country is it is it um, are, you, are you like I I, I think I, I'm 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 psyched about the the orders so far and just the the rapidity with which they. Uh, they came out. I thought it was really uh, striking how he came prepared, and instead of going to parties all night, he went and signed those on the first day. So that was that was encouraging. But I really like the legislative effort as well that this immigration bill has been introduced. So I mean, that's showing uh, immigration reform really needs to be through Congress um, to to be permanent, to not be able to be overturned by executive order. So. Uh, I think that was a really good step. And, and that's a big deal, mm -hmm. uh, immigration bill, because um, it's not just that it will, you know, create a, um, you know, a clear path to citizenship. It's going to make a, you know, the immigration system much more accessible, humane, based on the needs of people. But when you um, naturalize citizens, you expand the electorate. You shift, you know, who is voting in the country, and that's going to be a huge step. Um, uh, so, you know, given that, you know, all the, a lot of the progressive gains we've seen over the, you know, where they've been over the past uh, decade, and especially the past two elections, um, have been from, 
bringing new people into uh, the electorate, getting them out to vote, getting them registered. So I think this could be really huge. That's why we need to pass a new Civil Rights Act too, Michael, because, you know, I mean, they, they got rid of the Supreme Court overturned uh, the uh, Civil Rights The Voting uh, Rights Act, yeah. The Voting Rights Act. And uh, so there's no pre-clearance anymore for those Dixiecrat states that were gerrymandering and rearranging the uh, playing field. Uh, so a new Civil Rights Act, in addition to the immigration, that's going to be really important, don't you? And the and the Pro Act, we right. can't we can't Pro and Act. the Pro Act, which would um, uh, strike down uh, overturn right to work laws, I believe, across the country, make it much easier um, to form unions and bargain collectively, which is another um, huge step forward for democracy, both workplace democracy and political democracy, because the labor movement. Um, plays such a huge role in, um, especially in this last election, in, um, in moving democracy forward. In I think that's places, why in, you in most mentioned... places they, 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 they played it. But in, a, in, a, in Ohio, not, well, no, not so much. But Michael, I, I'm, I'm hearing that uh, uh, the congressman, senator from Utah, Mr. What's his name? Uh, the moderate so-called Mitch Romney. Romney, Romney yeah. says he's against the stimulus package. And oh, it costs too much money. Let's wait and see. We just spent nine hundred billion dollars. And I don't think the people will stand for that. I mean, we, we were just talking about it being an, a turning point or a new chapter. And I think it's definitely a turning point from the perspective of the average working American or unemployed American, I guess we could say. I think the whole Trump era was a wake up call uh, for many people. I think um, sitting there you know, during, I don't call it election night, I call it election week because you know it took a few days to get the, the results there. But I think seeing that 75 million people turning up for Trump and then seeing you know the attack on the Capitol building, I think a lot of people sat back and said, wow, this is, this is the result of that. While we're sitting here unemployed and not getting our you know stimulus package or as much as it should be, this is what, you know, the Republican Party's doing. And so I was very um, encouraged, I guess, by, you know, while the inauguration was going on, our own YCL here in New York was up there in the Bronx, uh, standing in solidarity with the Teamsters and AOC, you know, AOC was on the ground with them. And so, you know, they're going to keep the pressure up. They don't stop and celebrate, kind of like Anita was saying, there was no parties inauguration. At, you know, the, the people's movements are going to continue, you know, the Black Lives Matter movement, I think is going to continue. I think um, Stacey Abrams voter voter registration campaigns. I think that's going to expand outside of Georgia. So I think we have we have a lot of work to do. And I don't. I think people are woke. We say woke, or we could even say getting to be class conscious and, and to a certain degree. Um, and we're going to keep the pressure up. So that's encouraging. So what you're trying to say, there's the possibility of a turning point, Rosanna, but it's not going to turn unless we turn it unless we grab hold to the wheel and, and turn it. Exactly. It's, you know, once again, it's the people's movement. The people have the, the people have the ultimate power to make these fundamental changes, you know, by uniting together, not falling for all of this hatred and fear mongering and news that, you know, false news and things like that, you know, doing your research, uh, especially now because we have the internet back then, you know, in my, 20s and 30s, we didn't have this resource. So we can actually do quick research to see if these things are true or not. But ultimately, you know, it's the people's power who has brought in some of these new changes. It's the people's movements that have brought in this uh, presentation on the uh, on immigration and health care and all of these things that even, you know, even Biden, you know, instead of going to a party, signed 17 executive orders, it was the people's movement who made it happen. And I think if we really understand that, we can really make a lot of changes. Of course, COVID might have had a little bit to do with it too. I well, mean, yeah. You know, well, you might have been a little bored. And so you, yeah. to, you can't sleep like me, you get a little insomnia. So <laughs> I, but Anita, I hear everything's not you know, completely uh, positive. I hear that there is Guido, the, second, the new Secretary of State nominee, says we're going to recognize uh, Mr. Guido. Am I pronouncing that right, Michael? Uh, Guido. 
Why do? Why do? And we're not going to. We're going to tighten sanctions against the uh, uh, Maduro government. Is that true? Yeah. Well, and and we kind of knew that was coming um, since before you know Biden was uh, elected. You know that was kind of his stance and the stance of the wider Democratic Party. And that's why, I mean, if we think back to 2003, when Bush invaded Iraq, that same anti-war sentiment that came out, we have to really play a role in, you know, firing up this anti-imperialist um, sentiment, especially in the middle of this pandemic. It's just so inhumane that not just in Venezuela, but in countries like Iran, Syria, they can't get the essential medicines they need because of these, you know, inhumane blockades um, on these countries. Right. Now, I hear Anita that that, that the new administration said they want to reset relations with Cuba. Reset. Relations well, I I certainly hope so. The um the the uh, the Obama ad administration had a a mixed um uh, uh, effect on on Cuba. At first, it it was not very positive, but of course, at the end, uh, Obama did regularize uh, relations with Cuba, and and things were really off to a good start. Um, but not completely even regularized. They never lifted the embargo, which is a failed policy from 1961 um, and has caused a lot of hardship and a lot of, a lot of cost to the Cuban economy. Um, but I think, I mean, I, I hope, and I know um, there's a hope in Cuba too, that um, the Biden administration will, will be a, a better, better uh, situation for Cuba. And these sanctions and blockades are- we can't have progressive policies at home and while U.S. imperialism is running ransack around mm -hmm. the world. Do you, do you see a possibility for changing fundamentally U.S. foreign policy? Are you asking me? Scott. Oh, um, you know, we, we, we have to keep working at it. You know, we were in a, uh, a board meeting the other night and one of the comrades um, you know, really forcefully uh, put out the idea that we, you know, we have to tell people, look, you saw the coup attempt here. You saw armed right wing mobs trying to storm our Capitol building to overturn an election. That's the same thing that the U.S. ruling class has been pushing in Venezuela, in Bolivia, in Cuba, you know, all around, all around the globe. And if we oppose it here, if we support democracy here, we also have to you know, support democracy in, in our foreign policy, support the, you know, respect for the sovereignty of the, the peoples of other countries. And I think that's exactly right. You know, we're a party of, of democracy. And eventually, you know, that struggle for democracy gets so big that capitalism can't contain it anymore. And, and that's... Now, speaking of democracy, I got a question. Now, you had these goons, these Ku Kluxes and Proud Boys and neo-Nazis and other corporate boardroom sponsored uh, terroristic kinds of activities. They placed two pipe bombs, uh, one at the Democratic National Con Committee, one at the Republican, and uh, they didn't go off, thankfully. Um, do, do you do, is that, now they're, they're talking about a new anti-terrorism bill. Now you want democracy on one side, but how are you going to deal with, do you favor repressing or going after the, these, these, these uh, folks who tried to overturn the uh, uh, a government? How do you deal with that? Anybody want to take a shot at it? I, I think if you, if you start, if you really have an administration that, 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 that starts looking after people's needs, and enables uh, workers to organize to uh, to you know benefit themselves and as a, as a collective. Um, I think we're going to see um, you know more hope for regular participation, not storming the Capitol, but uh, voting and and working in civic organizations to get, make a better life and community organizations and unions. And I think that goes back to uh, the, the PRO Act. I was on a call last night and we heard uh, our comrade who uh, is old enough to say, I was there in the thirties and I saw how important it is for workers to be able to organize themselves. And that freedom to organize really has a profound effect on society. And I think 
uh, with that attitude and with all this unemployed councils um, kind of reflection that we have going on with resolutions being passed all over the place. We have one going on in Florida right now. I think um, there's gonna be momentum for, for some really um, serious profound changes uh, potentially. That economic anxiety is the thing that's motivating these people, but isn't it, isn't it racial, racist animosity and uh, aspirations for dictatorial power and hatred of Jewish people and hatred of Mexicans. Uh, I mean, isn't that what is? Uh, lots of it's lots of things coming together. I think you know. Okay. Um, you know, there, what are you going to do? Repress them, Scott? I, I think you know the the people that stormed the Capitol that participated in an attempt to overturn the election. And by the way, for me, that includes. The, the officials who uh, sponsored voter suppression, who pushed it forward, um, I think they should be held um, criminally accountable. If you broke the goddamn law, you need to go to jail. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, right? uh, the, the, the point of it is that the, the, <laughs> the extreme right is the biggest threat to democracy. So I don't think we can take the position that, oh, you know, we, we're against the use of state power, we're against, you know, the repression of, no. Um, we, we are in a process of clearing away the obstacles to real advanced multiracial democracy in this country. And that process, just like after the Civil War, that process is not one where you just, you know, step back and you, know, you need to use, we're in a moment where the people's movement is strong enough to force a section of the capitalist class to wield state power in a way that aligns with our interests. So. I am developing the concept, Rosanna, that we need a specific anti-fascist program to deal with this new crisis. You can't deal with the political crisis, economic crisis, environmental crisis, health crisis, one, we're not going to be able to solve them unless we also deal with the fascist crisis. What do you think? Well, that's, I think that's really key because fascism only spews hate. It doesn't give you solutions. It doesn't give you permanent solutions. It, it, it uh, provides more repression, more anxiety, more everything because, you know, you, you don't know where you stand. And I think that people, um, uh, my mind just went blank. Uh, I, I just think, yeah, definitely. <laughs> I'm sorry if I just no, no, no. Too early in the morning for me. Early morning out there for, for, for you. But Anita, <laughs> and this has to be the last, QAnon conspiracy theories. Right. Um, millions of people, tens of be believing that the election was stolen, alternate facts and realities. We need a mass, we need to deal with the ideology and educational. How do we, Crap, we were on Discord last night with the communist uh, oh. members and they said, Joe, uh, Rosanna, how are you gonna deal with these? And I was like, that's a good goddamn question. <laughs> what do we do? Well, what uh, I think they're finding out for themselves that that they were duped, and it was pretty easy to to dupe them. So um, it was a big event yesterday. It didn't happen, right? Some kind of storm. exactly. I mean, there were people so convinced that that Biden would never be inaugurated. They were really, they really had convinced themselves. And I think they do have to have, you know, I mean, take a reckoning when they when they saw what happened, and they may eventually adapt a new conspiracy theory that will all, you know. I, I, that will uh, explain all facts, no matter how uh, outrageous it is. So um, we'll see. You know, when I was younger, I had my friend, my best friend, uh, uh, mom got really mad at me because she didn't believe the people landed on the moon. <laughs> and I said, I said, that's silly. Who are you saying is silly? You don't talk to a grown woman. <laughs> I'm gonna whoop your butt. No, I tried to. I tried butt. to pull that once on Anita. I tried to pull that once on Anita. Anita said, "I grew up uh, down the street from Buzz Aldrin. What are you talking about?" <laughs> <laughs> Buzz was my neighbor. <laughs> Comrades, brothers and sisters, we're in a new political moment, 
You know, we said that a month ago. You said you might not be able to see it yet, but it's coming and now it's here. But like spring, it's not gonna happen inevitably. Spring is inevitable, spring but we is. have to fight for the turning point. We have to fight to make things happen. Without that, because the ruling class, they're gonna fight to turn uh, the turning point in their direction. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So check us out. Um, Oh, by the way, we have a, a educational webinar a week from Sunday. What's the subject, uh, Scott? Michael? Uh, Marxist political economy, I believe. Um, uh, I CJ forget the title. I'm sorry, I should have. Uh, managing uh, editor, check us out. CJ Atkins, right. is going to be holding a, a, a fourth. And uh, uh, stay tuned uh, uh, and stay in the fight. We'll see you next week at 1030. Take care. Later, comrades. Bye. Good morning. Bye. Peaceful transfer of power. <laughs> <laughs>